What's up, guys? That's City of Sun. Back at it again. Um, if you don't know me, I'm Alex. Uh, I'm working on my 2002 Subaru Impreza WRX bug eye today. Um, as per usual, I pretty much do this every weekend that I have available. So, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take out the ECU and I'm going to verify um, if it's burnt out or whatever. Uh, I'm going to take off the casing and I'm going to look into it and see if I see any burnt spots. Um, I'll try and document it as much as possible as I go. Um, the main reason I'm doing this, I mean partially I'm making this video so I can have a reference um, for what I've done so I can remember everything I've done to, you know, trying to fix the problems. Uh, I theorize that the ECU maybe, maybe has some burnt spots or is damaged. And not because it's not starting, but because Generally speaking, um, so as as I've done in previous videos, I've had issues with wiring in my car. Um, the stereo was exposed wiring, the or had exposed wiring. The headlights has, had exposed wiring. Uh, the <clears throat> the uh, amps, the amp and the subs, their wiring wasn't the best because um, they were like just not on there all the way. Um, the negative wire, you've seen it. Anyway, so I wonder if while it was having issues, if it shorted something out and is if that's the reason why my car isn't providing uh, any voltage visibility for the upstream O2 sensor, because that, that's brand new. It should be showing just fine. And if that's not it, that means I'm going to have to take out the whole wiring harness and check that. Uh, it could be that the... Um, ECU has been reprogrammed with an aftermarket programming with a Cobb uh, EP2, I think it's called, port, access port 2. Yeah, EP2, duh. Um, so at least that's what I've been informed. I don't know how true that is. I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, so I'm going to see what's going on and I'll document it as I go. I've already taken off the plate. Um, there's one, two, three screws and then there's one nut that goes on to here now the nut the, there's a screw that's already in like uh, attached to the body into the chassis and so you just basically undo that nut um, you're gonna need an extension I used a big ass extension um, it's uh, it's gonna be 10 mil uh, all the way through so you can see I've already done that um, now I just gotta undo that nut and that nut and I think it should just come right out. I'm also going to have to undo all these connectors. But what I'm going to do, just so I don't forget which order they go in, because it looks like they're very similar to each other as far as the connectors. I, mean, I don't know how well you can see. I can't get the hell out of here. <laughs> um, so I'm going to take a Sharpie, and I'm going to mark each in, uh, individual one, each connector, and I'm going to give it like a number and then go with it that way, just so I can get it in there correctly. I don't want to, you know, put it in the wrong order, anything like that. Um, so that's what I'm going to do, and I will get back to you in a second. Okay, so now it's free. Um, yay! Uh, there's a little connector right here, a little clip. Uh, I think you just pinch it. I can't really pinch it very well at this angle, or, you know, with my hands, I think it's going to be kind of a pain in the ass. So I'm going to get a set of pliers, I think, or a screwdriver, and be very gentle when you do this. You do not want to break it. I mean, not that it's really, like, going to affect the electrical components, but, you know, just to, I just want to keep it nice and clean. I want to keep it nice and straight. So anyway, I'm going to mark these and get that off of there with a set of pliers, and we'll see how that goes. Honestly, that was actually quite easy. I just used some needle nose. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is, if I can get this off one hand, cool. I'm gonna mark these with numbers, um, and then I'm going to put the amount of, uh, I'm gonna put like a line for each number. Uh, I'm gonna make it like, so it's gonna be like, for example, one, two, three, and then, four and five um, hopefully this will work how I want it to so I'm gonna go one one two wow that is bleeding maybe that won't work anyway one two three there we go a little better one two three four, three, four. and then 
one, two, three, four, and five. That'll work. So that way I can indicate which ones go where, um, just to make it easier on myself, because I don't want to have to like reorganize everything and fucking put it back together and take it apart and all that nonsense, just to be frustrated because I can't figure it out. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, so they got these little plug pieces right here. Maybe I should have just kept it in place before that. Whatever. Uh, so I'm going to do that, and then I'll get back to you in a second. And of course, one of the clips would break. Well, at least I know that the only one that's broken is the one that doesn't have a number. Uh, something I didn't think about because I wasn't being very mindful. Uh, you gotta be careful because if you mark it up, it's, it's yeah, I, I didn't think about that. Uh, <laughs> well, at least I have a good indicator as to what it is. Maybe I'll just re-dot um, them, but that sucks. I'm gonna have to get a new freaking connector for that. Ugh. Anyway, so yeah, I disconnected. So I'm seeing screw there, and there, and right there, uh, and right there, right, excuse me, and right there. Um, so I'm going to take it apart with a screwdriver, and that's the one I've got. I don't know much about ECUs, so I'm going to double check what's going on inside, and damn airplane, uh, hopefully this will work out. If I have there are any burnt spots, uh, I'm not seeing anything that is warranting any any kind of any fear or worry or whatever that I'm going to have to replace this thing. Um, unfortunately, it is glued to the bottom side of the casing, as I'm not sure if you, yeah, there you can, you can see, but yeah, I'm not seeing anything on the top. I don't want to pry at it and accidentally snap it or anything, so I'm not even going to mess with it as far as the bottom side goes. Um, so I'm not seeing any real burnt out marks on the ECU, so I'm not... I'm not concerned with it being an ECU problem. Um, I don't see any broken solder joints anywhere. I don't see any burnt out resistors or anything. You know, diodes look like they're out of order. Everything looks like it's pretty, pretty secure. Um, pretty good quality. So, doesn't look too bad. Um, that means it's probably freaking wiring, which is a royal pain, but at least it's not a $650 part, which is a huge, huge relief. So, yeah, I'm not seeing anything warranting fear of the worst. Um, so, I'm going to put this all back together and I will get back to you shortly. I've kind of done a lot and skipped a few steps as far as like recording wise. Uh, what I did was there, right here in these three holes, there's the Upstream O2 sensor. I'm not sure what this is connected to. Um, I'll have to trace it back later. Anyway, it's connected to this big guy. And then there's the Downstream O2 sensor. Um, so what I did was, because this is a previous thing I did earlier, I, a ground wire that wasn't connected. Um, <sighs> so here we are. This somewhere has to be the culprit. Either that or that is tuned retardedly. So... I don't even know what that connects to. No clue. Probably like a performance package piece or something. I don't know. Anyway. So, I've got to figure out which one of those connects to the upstream O2 sensor and find out why in God's name it is not showing me any voltage. So I'm going to have to look into the book of my car on my phone and see what's going on. That's my next step. Got some fucking nonsense up in here. This isn't connected to anything. I have no fucking clue what it's for, but it's nice to the OBD2 scanner, which, you know, looks like it's a, uh, yeah. Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Um, also, look at this bullshit. Exposed wire here. Electrical taped. But exposed fucking wire there. Burnt out wire there. I decided to take my whole dash apart. Just, you know, check it. it wasn't very hard either because this motherfucker was only held in by a little clip. This thing on the side right here. That's the only thing holding this in. That was it. Um, found the 
uh, wireless or wired fucking speaker thing, whatever, microphone attachment. It wasn't even plugged in all the way. But if you look in there, it's like all electrical taped and shit. God, that's, that's like exposed fucking solder joint here. Like, that's not even solder, that's fucking exposed wire. What the shit? It's hard to tell, but... Look at that. Look at that shit. What the fuck? What's up, guys? So, I know I kind of missed out a lot on what happened today. Um, stuff kind of happened, okay? It's life. Um, but I had intended to record more of the video, um, but, you know, it didn't end up happening. Uh... But anyway, me and Nicole ended up hanging out. Um, we're we're here at my place right now, and I know it's kind of dark because, well, it's like 11 o'clock at night. Um, we decided to plasti dip Nicole's wheels, so why not? Um, she's just doing some touch-ups. Um, we're kind of running out of plasti dip. <laughs> uh, figured it would be just temporary, you know, until we could get it actually uh, powder coated. But. Um, that's the rattling can. But anyway, so this is kind of what we got going on. Something weird we fucking witnessed. Um, <laughs> this hey, is too stupid again. to make up, okay? Here we go I had again. an aerosol can. It was plastic dip. And it didn't work since I bought it. It just, it, it got foamy and it wouldn't spray properly. It was like, <laughs> I, if you know how paint works, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway. For some fucking reason, I was like, you know what we could do? Nicole goes, what? I was like, get a sharp object, cut a hole in the bottom. The pressure will actually cause it to spray out. So it'll have too much pressure buildup and we'll be able to do, you know, just, it'll just blow it all out at that little hole and then we'll just be able to cover it with whatever necessary. Now tell me why it is that as soon as we fucking do that, it releases all that pressure and we can spray it like a normal fucking spray can suddenly. Nicole's doing it right now. Same fucking can. Nicole, show me the spray, the, the spot that we cut the hole out of. Oh, you mean, uh, watch out, it might spray again. It's right, right there. Fucking there. See this guy right here? I cut that oh, hole watch out, it might spray with again. a fucking razor. I used a box cutter, cut that hole, and for some fucking reason, now it wants to spray normally. Like, look at this. This is too stupid to make up. Fucking ridiculous. Oh, Alright, well, Nicole, yeah. short sprays. Short bursts. I'm just trying to get this it done. So we have wet, extra dude. now. It's so much, it's so wet, it's not going to be able to dry though. That's fine, it'll dry eventually. Eventually. Anyway, um, puncture hole right there. See it bubbling right there? That's where I cut the bitch. But for some reason, watch this. It suddenly works. I don't know why. It, it, it's freaking weird to me, but it, it works. I, I don't know. I, I, physics is, is apparently deciding to be ridiculous right now. Um, I, I don't. I don't. I don't even know. I, I'm. I give up. I give up. Just. So if you ever have that problem where it doesn't want to spray, it's like. It's being ridiculous. Apparently, that's the solution. Who who would have thought? I was just being ridiculous, and it fucking worked. So I looked at all the wiring beforehand, um, before I decided to you know tape it all up and make sure it was safe. Don't use liquid tape, please. Just for the future owner of a vehicle that you may be selling, or may someday unintentionally realize that you have to sell, like I didn't want to with my Lancer. Yeah, pretty much. So, you know, just don't use liquid tape, please. And then please. it be removable. Whatever floats your Subaru. It, it's basically just <sighs> frustrating. But anyway, so I don't know what's up with that. So now I gotta figure it out. Very sad because I found out they don't have LSD. No LSD in the Miata. No, I don't have any more LSD. No LSD. All my LSD is gone. All your LSD are belong to us. Yeah. Okay, so we got this one right here. It's all pretty much done. We're doing a white interior. 
Um, we coated off, or sorry, uh, not coated off. We cut off the actual black to be a, you know, kind of popping when it comes out. Um, it's actually all taped off. You can't really tell too well. We kind of had a little bit of trouble with the rain, um, but we're doing that with all four wheels. That, that one's almost done. That was the first one we did. Um, that one, yeah. and then it's this one, and then this one. So essentially what we did, thanks to Nicole's brilliance, was um, we, we used these kind of paper to lay it down on the ground, um, and then we used more of the paper to cover over it while it was raining it on it, so it was like covered over the actual wheel. Um, I'm using my Sube for lighting. Um, but yeah, we just pretty much did plastic up on it. She's up on all four jack stands. Um, completely wheelless. This, this Miata. Completely off the ground. And yes, we took necessary precautions with the jack stands and the jack. and It's a, t a th two and a half ton jack and a three ton you want to see what's under my jack hood? stand each. Check, check out under, under hood. hood. Oh. More like size a spare. Oh, yeah. Oh. Full size, yo. Yeah, full size, yo. Yeah. It gets me from A to B. A to. And then my leaky oil canister. That's a. Uh, that's my nos. <laughs> Your nos? Yeah, I'm running nos. Yeah. Running nos in that oil can. Yeah. That's hey, my yo. nos. Oh, and that right there. Big brake kit. Yeah, holy shit. No, it's actually no. That right there. That's your uh, your big battery cable kit. No, that's my BBD. BBD. 